Yes, but not representing us. But now, due to redistricting, yes. uh, Senator Serrano's really. district has changed, and we are lucky enough to have Liz Krueger as our new mayor. Assuming she wins in November, and one of the changes she won't like right. coming to none. So <laughs> she's kind of here. I wanted her to give her a chance to meet everybody, to have them talk to, uh, you know, yes. ask her questions, and let her tell you a little bit about herself. And I did leave a sheet out there about Liz and the committee she's on and that kind of thing. If you haven't seen it, grab it on the way out. Okay. So thank you, Margie. I yes, want to start off by you. thanking you for opening up your home for this. You're very welcome. And fabulous food. <laughs> Audrey warned me there would be fabulous food. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, you were known for that. And for anyone who might not know Audrey Tannen, who's sitting with her back to the fireplace. Hi. And who doesn't know Audrey Tannen? Audrey, uh, just to correct it, that's not a fireplace. However, I say in front of it, I get calls from, the board gets calls saying, how come she can have a fireplace? Oh, who's <laughs> <laughs> strictly a mantle. A mantle. A mantle. A mantle. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Don't put that in your newspaper. Um, but Audrey has been a really important member of my staff now for several years, and she's been your neighbor here on Roosevelt Island forever. So I joke, but not maybe so much. Your new state senator is Audrey Taylor. Um, but truthfully, it will be easier for you to find her either when you bump into her on Main Street or when you just call the office, and she will always be very responsible of making sure she talks to me and lets me know that there's this issue going on and what can we do about it. Um, and also today, Wendy Brennan, also from my staff, joining us. Wendy is also a critically important member of my staff. She specializes in working with issues for older New Yorkers and on mental illness issues. And that also covers everyone here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we won't go there. Other than when I was 50, I threw myself a birthday party, which is titled Now That I Am Middle Aged. My friends were furious. We're not middle aged. No, well, technically, we are. And my parents were furious. We're middle aged. How the hell can you be middle aged? I was like, I thought I was just trying to be honest. But apparently, I, this is blown up in my face. Um, so you are whatever you wish to be, yes, and we definitely exactly. won't go down the road of mental health and illness. Um, but Wendy also handles um, organizing what we used to have all the time, which were town hall meetings, and now we have webinars. Um, but you know what? We have learned through COVID that webinars is actually a pretty amazing way to be able to keep people informed, and we find that we can easily get 300, 400, 500 people signing up, where when you had a town hall, you were like, what do I do if more than 100 show up? There's no space to put anyone, right? And now you can do these events. So I mention it both to make sure that you know, you can just get on my email list just by going on my website, lizkruger.com or giving Wendy your email address today, yes. And the, we're going to take some of Margie's list. Oh, and we will take interview. anybody who signs in and gives their email. So we put you on the listserv. We try not to drown you in emails. Usually there are updates about what's happening or something important that you should perhaps know about, perhaps healthcare related. What we announce are webinars. And here's the great thing about emails. You can delete me, I will never know. I will never be offended. No trees died for this effort. So as many email addresses that wish to be on, we don't care whether you live in my district or not if you want to sign up for the information. Um, and so I just wanted to make sure people knew about that. But also, if you realize that, you know, it would be a really great idea to have a webinar on X issue because it's important to many people and nobody's doing enough about it, if you let us know, and if you let Wendy know, we can probably create that webinar. Because uh, we've also found that there's an extraordinary sort of and deep collection of experts, not just in New York City, but if you're doing it on the web, like we, we wanted to have an expert talk about vaccines. And Wendy found the head of the, I guess, United Nations World Vaccine Center. But she, and she was a doctor in London. And she said, well, I'll try to get her. And she was like, it's just getting on the web. Sure, we just have to make sure the hours match between England and New York. But I'm happy to do this for you. Mm -hmm. So you really can get almost anybody that you want to come and talk about crucial issues. 
So I just wanted to do that. I guess, what should I tell you about myself? So I have been the senator for 20 years over there on the Big Island. I love that you call Manhattan the Big Island. It's <laughs> one of the things I learned about Roosevelt Island. I feel like I've now been in Hawaii or something. <laughs> um, and I am, this, the district is changing quite a bit. So I'm gaining Roosevelt Island. I'm losing some of the northern, northeastern corner of my district. And I am losing, huh, and you'll probably know these areas. I'm losing Kipps Bay, a chunk of eastern Murray Hill, a little bit of Turtle Bay, and Stuyvesant Town, Peter Cooper, Waterside, which are not mine. They're also, they're all going to a district that is majority Queens and has taken a, a, a chunk of Manhattan and a piece of Brooklyn. So it's a brand new senator. She's 27 years old. She's lovely. And I, when I first talked to her, I said, did you understand what you were signing up for? Three boroughs? Are you crazy? Um, like, there's a lot of local issues to learn, and now you have to learn them for three boroughs. Good luck to you. Uh, but anyway, she, she doesn't have Roosevelt Island, um, but she has a piece of what was my district. But then I'm gaining Times Square and Penn Station um, and a whole section of Midtown that I, that I didn't have. So, you know, there's a new learning curve for me and my staff, but again, I'm totally confident of my ability to quickly learn about the issues in, Rose in Roosevelt Island. One, because I have Audrey and she's right here. Two, I've already been overlapping Rebecca Seawright and Julie Menon on the Manhattan side of our districts. So it's not like a new group of people for me to meet and figure out how to work with. And of course, Carolyn Maloney, who's leaving as our congressperson. But I overlap Jerry Nadler and Carolyn Maloney for 20 years. So it's also not really new territory for me to work with Jerry Nadler. Um, and I know that he will want to get to Roosevelt Island and meet people also, because he has told me that. Um, I'm on the Finance Committee. I'm the chair of the Finance Committee, which still shocks me to this day, um, which is considered to be the committee with the most work. Some people will say it's the most important committee. I just look at it as the most work. Um, and so when you're on the Finance Committee, they pretty much say you're not supposed to be on other I am on the budget and revenue subcommittee, um, actually because we created the committee and the chair of that said, you know this stuff, you have to get on the committee with me. I was like, okay, fine, I'll do that too. Um, and I'm also on the rules committee, which isn't a real committee. It's a committee that decides whether bills can skip their normal committees and just go directly to the floor. Um, and it's controversial for a variety of reasons, but it's sort of necessary to get things done at the end of session. What else can I tell you? When I started as a senator, and for many years up in Albany, they called me that liberal lunatic from Manhattan. <laughs> now granted, the Republican Party did control the Senate for like 70 years then. I don't believe my politics have changed at all. I think I am left of center Democrat and proud of it. But they now call me the conservative caucus of the Senate. <laughs> because we have so many new, young, energetic, farther to the left um, colleagues. And I think it's fascinating and exciting. And we have a great conference and I'm really, really proud to be a part of it. Um, which was not always the case because I served with a bunch of criminals and sociopaths during certain periods <laughs> of the 20 years I was in the Senate. And that was, those were D's and R's, by the way. Um, but it's a great Senate that I'm thrilled to be a member of. Um, Jose Serrano, who you are losing as your senator, is one of my very dear friends in the Senate. Um, so he already has assured me he and his staff will make sure any information transfer that needs to take place between two senators, no problem. I actually convinced Senator Serrano to run for the Senate when he was the congressperson. So he, you know, during the good years, he goes, great, I'm so glad I did this. During the bad years, you made me do this. Like, no, I didn't make you do this. Um, I think I'll stop. And I really just want to hear from you and take questions. And here's the thing about me. I never make promises. When people say you promise, I always say, no, you must have heard that from someone else. Because I don't promise. I'm one of 212 legislators, and almost nothing happens in Albany that you can't actually get through two houses and then signed by a governor. 
So I'll tell you if I agree with you or I don't agree with you. I'll tell you I can work on that and I can try, but I'll never promise you. I also try to be really careful that when I don't know something, I go, let me go figure it out and get back to you, as opposed to wing it. Now you have to win a lot of things in politics because you deal with a thousand things a day. Um, but I'm quite sure that issues that I feel like I really know might not be the issues that Roosevelt Island wants to bring to me. Because you are this very unique small island in the middle of the river in the middle of this giant city. Um, and Audrey knows already, like, I came to Roosevelt Island a couple of weekends ago for an art fair. And it's one street. <laughs> and so she said, you, can, you know, you can't get lost, it's one street, and I'll be wearing bright red standing on the sidewalk so you'll see me. And I'm calling her going, I don't see you. She goes, keep walking. Okay, I'm keeping walking. I still don't see you. Hmm, you weren't very far away. What's around you? And I described, she goes, oh, you went the wrong way. <laughs> I'm saying, if I can get lost anywhere, I will. And apparently that's also true here on Roosevelt Island. Um, but if I can get lost here, pretty much a guarantee that I'll end up doing that. I have zero sense of direction. So with that, I'm just going to, anybody who wants to ask a question or raise an issue, please feel free um, to raise whatever you wish. And hi, everybody over there. <laughs> I'm sorry there's no seats for you. Um, well, there's a couple more. There's, there's, a, couple more. Right here. there's a seat uh -huh. right here. There's, there are two here, actually. Oh, okay. I'm close to the other one. Let's push more. Okay. Yes, hi. Hi, I'm, Con I'm Connie, and we have actually met. I thought we had, yes. I interviewed you. Oh. I, I'm, I was, I'm a retired now, I was at Columbia. Anyway, my question, my understanding is that, that you're, you are chair of the committee that appoints the uh, um, uh, director of RIAC. We don't appoint them. The governor re recommends, and then they are confirmed through the Senate. So the Senate Finance Committee has confirmation powers, not so different than the U.S. Senate confirming, you know, secretaries and fill the blank agencies. So yes, we don't appoint, but we we either can confirm or not confirm when a governor. Well, we, I mean, you know, Roosevelt Island uh, has been agitating, as I'm sure you know, for years for that that to be an elected position. And I'm wondering if you have some thoughts about that. So that was only recently brought to my attention because, as I said, I wasn't necessarily finding following Roosevelt Island so carefully. That's so the channel. Right. So <laughs> I guess my first couple of questions that I would need to dig into would changing the structure of how REOC is created or run have to be a constitutional change, or could it be done through legislation? No, they just need to follow what's already there. It's supposed to be yeah. elected representation. It's not. So in the, is it in the Constitution? It's, it's, no. It's, no. It's, Unconsolidated it's, laws from New York State. Not, just the, not, the, not that they're elected, it's not in there. Yeah, that's right. It's not that they're elected, it just describes the structure of the board, but it doesn't say whether they're elected. But, they're elected. but, but then there were changes, there were amendments to that. But no, but what they said was that a portion of them must be um, Roosevelt Island right. residents, but yeah. it never changed the fact that they still weren't elected. Appointed. So it would have to be a change to the consolidated laws of, I forget the number. Two, two are at the advice of the mayor. Mm -hmm. The balance are completely up to the governor. We have the we've had four referendums so far in regard to who the community would want on these boards. Uh, the governor's only listened once, uh, and in fact, um, Mayor uh, Adams was here about three weeks ago, and uh, we all and many of the people that you see in this room were in that room with the with the mayor and uh, voicing our opinions about what needed to be done here. And the mayor said to us, I'm a list person, so give me a list. Okay. So as the founder of the Main Street Democrats, you tell me to do something, believe me, it's gonna get done. We have a list. We've been circulating this list now for approximately a month. And for any of you who haven't responded yet, you have until 12 o'clock tonight to respond. Right. I've got the email address with me, so you can take a picture of it and respond. We now have 26 items on that list. And the number one item from everyone who has responded is elected Leon. 
that is number one on the overall concerns from, from this community. Okay, so if you'll get me the same list when you send it out, and again, I still think that I need to do homework about whether and how one could change the current structure under law to make them elected, for example. I don't know if the mayor is supposed to appoint two, I believe you said. point. He can recommend to the, to the, to the governor. governor. One must be a Roosevelt Island resident. One does not have to be, but we've certainly asked the mayor to make sure that it is. But just because you appoint somebody to the, the board doesn't give the community the right to elect that person. It doesn't give us the- No, I understand. I was just trying to person. clarify. So the mayor is making recommendations to the governor. The assumption is that the governor would accept the mayor's recommendations right. mm -hmm. and put them before the Senate for confirmation. Right. Okay. So, but to change that in law so that some people, some number of people there were independently elected by the residents. Right. So that's where we have to get into the digging on what would you have to change? There's, there are nine in total. Two of them are there by virtue of their position. The head yeah. of the HDR, the director of the budget. Right. Everybody else is just appointed by the governor. So the five remaining for the on the governor's appointees, one must be a resident of Roosevelt Island. I mean, um, can be a non a non resident. The yeah. other four must be. So, so we've got four there, and then we've got of the mayors. One of those two must be so that, in fact, it gives us a majority on the REAC board. It's still but they're elected. still not elected. <laughs> and what we did was we we had a we called it a plug aside once, and and we actually voted. We said, I right, you know we know this isn't legit, but right. governor, here's who we'd That's like you to appo appoint. Right. And he appointed many of them, not all of them. And Marley Bloomberg, was when he was in, had but gave even though he only one ha uh, could uh, had to be a resident, he put both residents in. I was one of his. One so of I get the gist. I can find out more of the history, but I don't know the answer of how it could be changed right now. And There's good. other hands behind you, so I'm just going to... I just want to clarify yeah. something, because Connie actually pointed out that it has to do with the president of the REAC board. Am I right, Connie? Because the board gets to select who is president. But what has happened in the past is, and Margie can bear witness to this, that that uh, president of the board has literally been forced down the throat of the people that sit at the discretion of the governor on that committee. So it's not as if they really have discretion over who is appointed as the president. So they, they could have voted not to approve, but they didn't want to get thrown off the board. So yeah. in fact, it's not like they're going to lose their seat because they're not elected. So they'll do whatever they right. want. Right. Right. And yeah. say so Kristen is one of the REAC members. Where are you? Is this one REAC board member here. So I'm I'm accepting her from, from what I'm saying. I'm talking about mostly it's not that we don't like these people because yeah. we don't like the form of governance. I understand. Yeah. Yes, hi. Hi, uh, my name is Christina Del Pico and I run a nonprofit called I Dig to Learn. Thank you, Margie, for hosting. That's very kind of you and thank you for being here. I wanted to find out a little bit more about um, water, land, and air as far as environmental concerns. And Roosevelt Island is uh, has been promised an extension of Lighthouse Park, 2.5 acres of park, uh, where there's a parking lot right now. And so, Is that the north end? Yes, yeah. exactly. Because I know about the park on the south end. Yes, yeah, so okay. you would turn around and go the other way, right? Exactly. <laughs> 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 exactly. I know Roosevelt is at the south end. Yeah, there's a lighthouse, so okay. that's a good clip. Um, and we've been, uh, we just planted 70 trees. We're expanding the tree canopy here, and everyone has been great about composting and things like that. So. I was wondering, would you be able to support uh, this promise, I know you're not going to make a promise, of this 2.5 acres of expanded lighthouse park through a parking lot that has already been dedicated to this park. They did a nice uh, community session, they asked for ideas, but there seems to be maybe a little backing off of that. Are those things and other environmental things something that you can help support as a senator, or is that out of your purview? No, it's not out of my purview to consider supporting specific issues. Okay. I don't know, or does Riyadh own the park? Is it a state yeah. or a city? Uh, is it legally a park? It's, no. It is, uh, it's, it's city property. property. Yes, it's, it's state property. It's state property, it's state property, it's state property through 2068 under Riyadh's control. Mm -hmm. And is it, was it 
earmarked as actual parkland at this point in time? It, 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 yeah, sorry. She's when a historian, so she knows. City, when the city leased the island to the state, yeah. Kohler Hospital got, I think, five feet around their building as the city still owned it. That's how the point out became because they had gold water. And then Briot leased the rest of the land from okay. the, uh, to the state. Anyhow, so in simple words, everything around Kohler, including the front and the back, belongs to RIAC. Okay. On um, certain times there have been little disputes, usually it's sort of like a gentleman's agreement. But that back area is really, it is now RIAC property. They did have one planning session three or four years ago, and uh, we don't, you know, it, this company that did it once before, and then we don't know what happens. And my question was to follow with Christina's, uh, they, they're planning to redo Blackwell Park. We don't see anything. We don't see anything until the, until they're putting out bids. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what the hell is going on? This is a community. After 45 years, I think you probably have a thousand years of residency <laughs> in this room. We are entitled to see the plans before you put them out to bid, before you choose people. And this has gotten, Brianna has gotten more and more opaque over the years. You used to have operations meetings, real estate meetings, where we sat in a room and discussed things. Everything is now behind closed doors. You have to get people's personal phone numbers to find them because they don't want to talk on the REAC phone. And it's really, it's, it's, it's infuriating because this is our community and they hire people who know nothing about the island, like they do PR person. And um, they just want to be more and more opaque and it's, we don't know what the plans are. Show us the Blackwell plans before you, you know, excellent start digging. So, and I think your office and people like you have to start digging and, you know, so, you know, bring this to the public, bring it to the community, because the state is funding a lot of this, the city, all these agencies are funding it. And it's just like, everything is plopped down. The horrible South Point Park, which is a disaster, was just plopped down built in the middle of the pandemic, it's not safe, it's not maintained because, oh, we don't have any money to maintain it. Mm -hmm. And you know, the same thing with the so communication. There's no communications, they're hodgepodge, and we're the ones that are losing for it because we're gonna be 50 years old in three years, and 50 year old people start to develop wrinkles. <laughs> Brain fog. So seriously, really, we just have to, get them to talk to us and discuss things with us. It's our community. It's not It's not uh, the dog shelter, <clears throat> the type of black wall houses, rain, you know, it's not the king. So that's uh, fine. Uh, I, yeah. I, that now I just returned to the board of directors and they are very much aware that they do need, uh, so that was my one first num number one thing I said is that you have to be more communicative to the, uh, the Islanders. And they are in agreement that he's, of course he hired someone new, and what, Judy, you have to realize that Shelton can hire anyone he wants. Yes. That's his job. And, and most of them, that is his they job. And um, we have to remember that the director can hire. Now, we can hire him or anyone in his position. That is the boy's position. But after that, it is his position to hire. Now, we don't have to agree with everyone he hires, but remember, that's his responsibility. Um, and, but I too, as a resident, I think we should also have more say. And he did at the last minute meeting, you were there. Yes, I was. He did say, yes, you were there, and he stated that um, the community would be involved with the, um, for, to come in with their, I guess, comments. But you're right, they can start earlier. Yeah. Definitely yeah. start yeah. earlier. And because um, I know they're going to pull out this plan from four or five, three, four years ago that we discussed in back of the cold war. Oh, this is what the community wanted. Well, this is what we discussed four, four years ago, five years ago. You know, things have to be updated. And, and so just going back to you, thank you for this thing passed along. Yeah. So, just so I understand, it is intended to be park space. Yes. It's just that the community can't learn how it's going to be used as a park space and who's designing it and I, no, but I, they're not bringing anybody in for the discussion. To clarify that, uh, yeah. four years ago the community yeah. sat and presented ideas and the promise is that 2.5 <coughs> acres of parkland will be expanded and extended. There has been some talk that maybe there's going to be a reversal on that and keep it a parking lot. So I would say 
I'm not clear on all that was mentioned right here, um, except for communication. But what I um, want to make sure is the promises kept now that many years have gone by. And also to understand what kind of environmental things for land, air, or water, clean land, air, water, you have supported in the past, and what is appropriate for us to bring to you in your position. Because I'm not really clear on that. Others probably are very well versed. Okay. So just to finish up just on the, the lighthouse question. I don't know yet who promised that, so I'm not sure who gets to hold them to it. Was it the REAC board itself promised two and a half acres would be brought back? Uh, REAC's president, REAC's leadership, REAC's leadership, not the board. <clears throat> okay. The, the, the employees. Okay. So the same way as I'm going to do more homework on what would it take to change the underlying legislation around REAC to have elected people? I also now need to understand, and I don't, sure. what are the powers of the REAC board versus the REAC staff? staff. Mm -hmm. I suspect it's the board members who actually have legal authority, not the staff, because mm -hmm. rarely is it sure. not worked mm -hmm. that way. It's the board, board get to yes. but the board yeah. has to step up. Oh, yeah, the board has to step up. The board has to step up. Right, it's so I don't know when when you say a promise, I'm not sure who made the promise or whether that was well, the board has to. Um, it was the staff, the former the president of Riyadh, and who yeah. ran all the community. Uh, okay. Yeah. So if you have any kind of paper trail on that, that would be appreciated. Okay. It, it so really wasn't a promise; it was a proposed plan. A proposed plan is board. different than a promise. Oh, I see. And a promise is different if it's. A staffer who came and went versus a resolution of a board of directors and has crossing his fingers behind his back. And is crossing his fingers behind his back. So I'm not sure it is a promise. But we can definitely continue to look at okay. that. I, the, I was yes. on the board at the time. Okay. And it was definitely a discussion the board had and told the staff go get a company to go and design and include the community in it. And that's when it all started. And that's why we all came out. They had things at the church, and people talked about right. what they wanted to do. It was clearly in the minds of the board that this was going to be um, some kind of something that was real. going to happen, and it was going to be real. Okay, so we want them to make it real. We do. Got it. Thank you. And on bigger questions, yeah. Pick yeah. on environmental policy, yeah. at the state level, there is a lot of environmental law, mm -hmm. and it's a moving target right now because we're all desperate to speed up everything we're doing because climate change is winning this war. Mm -hmm. And as young people say, I love this line, there is no planet B, <laughs> and there isn't a plan B. So I try very actively to get involved in everything big picture environmental that I can, um, because I tell everyone who comes to see me on any issue, and I'll say this to you also, if we don't get climate change addressed correctly, whatever it is you care about, it doesn't matter. We won't be here. Right. We won't even be here to fight about it, right? So we have to get climate change done. And it's requiring a huge amount of change in culture of government, operation of government, um, and ultimately changes for all of us. So. Um, I already had a nice little chat with the president of the board here. Where did you go? There you were. There he is. Hi, Jude. About the importance of moving to green energy on Roosevelt Island because under new laws that the city is passing and the state is hopefully going to pass statewide the same thing, you know, we're not going to be able to use gas anymore. We're not going to be able to build with gas, and it's not clear how much gas will ever be available to use even in existing facilities. So we have to figure out what we're doing about that, because we really do have to get on oil and gas as quickly as possible. And we need to shift to green energy in every way we can. So I recently had a meeting with the folks who are trying to take over the Ravenswood plant across oh, yeah. the water. And they pointed out, you're getting Roosevelt Island, we supply the energy to Roosevelt Island. This is a dirty old peaker that everybody wants to close. We want to close it. We need the approval through the state process so that we can turn it into a green energy plant um, with very impressive proposals of what they want to do, um, which I talked to all my Queens colleagues about it right away. Because I was like, oh, it's your backyard. You must know more than me. And they're like, oh, we love this company. We love what they're trying to do. We want help. I was like, OK, sold. Um, 
So, and then today I learned there's an empty steam plant here, mm -hmm. and I yeah. think it's worth just talking to that other company because they were doing to do steam as well. Um, about maybe they could jump in and get something going here on Roosevelt Island. I have no idea whether they'll look at me and say you're crazy, but <laughs> why not ask? Um, so yes, if it's environmental, air, water, land, yes. And and maybe I will say, oh, that's really within the con you know the constraints of city government. Right. But guess what? I talk to city government representatives every day. And I talk to federal representatives every day. And we really work hard to try to work together and figure out, no, it's federal, you need to take the lead, or it's city, or oh, city and state could do it together. Let's try to talk about doing things together. Which didn't work for years under Cuomo and de Blasio. I don't want to even go into the why, it just never worked. Um, this mayor and this governor seem to have a philosophy that we're all in this together and we need to work together. So I'm taking them at their word that that's how we're approaching this. So I keep feeding things into both of them. Um, because to be honest, it doesn't matter what you define as a border in law or even a, on a map when it comes to the environment. It's going everywhere. I used to have this fight with my upstate Republican colleague. Well, you might have dirty air down there, but we have perfectly clean air in upstate New York. I thought the thing about air is, <laughs> and it moves around, so my really dirty air in New York City can hit your town any minute of any day. And they go, what? Oh. So back to science class, people. Right? <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, and I know, I know when we were trying to um, raise money for the public school's green roof, that was a real, um, a real collaboration. Sea ride and and at that time, Kalos and and also um, Brewer. Um, oh, it's Manhattan Brewer. So everybody pitched in funds to to work on that that project. So I, I, I now I remember you you see each other all the time. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh wait, did I see? Did you you had your hand up before? What, no, did we cover your territory? The same plant is owned by the New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation. Yeah. It it's runs with over six heavy oil. Well, and that's it, bad. We can't yeah, and do also that. everything connected to it has been uh, disengaged, and it's probably so outdated that even to you know it's just 1939 technology. So it would probably be cost more to try to refurbish, redo that into something rather than start from scratch. I'd love to use the building as an art studio or something, but uh, they when Goldwater closed, they took it all apart. So what's in there now is really. Ancient technology. Okay, so you're hearing that also, so people need to coordinate. That. Nice job. That's good. Okay. 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 Okay.
their private car, um, I guess, or public, or a cab, I'm not sure about a cab, but using a private car to get to medical appointments because they are not physically able to handle mass transit, whether there should be some mechanism for reimbursement. Um, and I think that that is at least being discussed. Oh, good. I don't know what will happen. I don't think they will try to do that for people who take cabs because they're still not even sure what level of increased cost cabs will face. They certainly will not be every trip you have to pay this because basically the assumption is any vehicle coming and going from the zone will pay it once a day. It doesn't matter how many times they come oh, and go through a zone. So a cab conceivably would be going in and out of the zone 20 times during you know, a, a day, and they're not going to get hit each time. There is a separate fee that is already applied to yes, cabs for every time you get in a cab yes. now. And there's definitely serious debate about why wouldn't Ubers and Lyfts have to do exactly the same thing that cabs do, or pay more, because as the cab companies point out, and they're not wrong, they pay hefty fees and taxes, both for the medallions and taxes of being cabs, and the Ubers and Lyfts don't, which is one of the reasons that the cab, the cab drivers are being put out of business. And so anything we do in congestion pricing should not be added advantage to Ubers and Lyfts versus the yellow cabs. And I actually agree with that very much, but they haven't, come up with any specific proposals. Although they did take testimony from thousands of people who came to the five or seven public hearings they had and are supposedly sorting through it. Now we have an added complication, which may put this off further into the future. The governor of New Jersey has declared that he doesn't have any intention of making New Jersey pay. Well, if New Jersey doesn't pay, how the hell do we explain to Long Island and Westchester or Roosevelt Island? You live here, but you have to pay, but New Jersey, who doesn't even live here, doesn't have to pay? Wait a second. So the governor of New Jersey first just said, I refuse to participate and you can't charge my people. Then we pointed out, no, no, we just send them a bill. You know, we all have easy pass. We all know how to use that. Um, and so then he said he will, if he has a legal way to stop us, from accessing license plate information for New Jersey. And then I think we said, no, you really don't. So then he said, well, I'm going to Biden and make him stop this. So that's where we are. So the two states are fighting with each other, which isn't the answer either, but may be delaying this a longer period of time. So it's stay tuned, read your newspaper, see what's <laughs> up with congestion pricing this week. Who else have their hands up? Anybody over here? I have a question. Okay, hi. Uh, two. Oh, and then I'm sorry, then I'm over here. Okay. One of my big issues that I've been whining about for many years, and I used to whine to Carolyn Maloney, and she was sick and tired of hearing from me, helicopters, and I was hoping for a few to go by, but they literally zoom and fly right over our buildings, right over the tram, right over the bridge. Mm -hmm. And there have been many accidents. Um, and I know Carolyn's been telling me there's nothing that we could do. They come from New Jersey. You can't stop the traffic. The federal government actually needs to make changes through the FAA. And so far, they haven't been willing to. It is a, Even though we're changing Congress people, it's actually a good discussion for you to bring up with Jerry Nadler, because he actually did at least get the FAA, FAA to consider something about the helicopters going from the west side heliport over Manhattan. And then there's a community in Brooklyn who's been going crazy about the noise from the heliport down at the bottom of Manhattan, I guess in between Brooklyn and Manhattan and the noise and that it shouldn't be allowed for tourists. Um, and the truth is, yes, the tourist helicopters if you say you can't land here, they just go to New Jersey and start their tourist business there, which isn't mm -hmm. a great answer because who gets to decide what their roots are? And the right. answer is the federal government 
not the state of New York or the city of New York. But it's not even the noise for me, because the noise yes. is a minute or two over my head on the 19th right. floor. But they're flying literally. They're not flying in the river, over the river. They're flying over our apartment. Right. Which scares me to death. Right. But again, those are FAA groups. So I don't disagree with you. And I've signed on to everything that's ever come out about stopping these helicopters. You know, because the truth is, like, for tourism, like, why should we have to suffer or be at risk so other people can take pictures? Who's going to be wherever on the weekends is extremely busy. I just wanted to put it on record to have you here and so okay. for me. Yes. I will. No, no, you were. Yeah. And there are a couple of coalitions of groups that have been working on this. I'm blanking on the name right now. That's not me, is it? No, no, no I don't no. sound like that. I'm just trying that. to find it. <laughs> um, but I, the frustration is the one level of government who really can do something about it doesn't seem to be interested. Well, when God forbid when something horrible happens, they'll be interested. It'll be too late. So they did outlaw small planes flying over. And they outlawed flying Manhattan. over Manhattan night yeah. after the last horrible accident a few years ago. I get it. But at yeah. night, if there's a shadow over my apartment, it scares me. I, I'll stop. And one more. And point. the other piece that I don't know how to answer because I live near Gracie Mansion. And the helicopters over that are non-stop. So when I checked, they were like, well, no matter what you were able to do on, on helicopters, you're not going to stop police helicopters. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I was, because yeah. I was like, how many helicopters need to hang out over Gracie Mansion? I was like, are we being bombed by another country? Yeah. 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 I, I know the New Jersey governor is angry over congestion pricing because he's sending planes over. So yeah. like, why do we need five? Police helicopters over Gracie Mansion. I don't get it. Uh -huh. um, so, and I, and I don't, and they weren't there under the last mayor, so I have no idea what they think is oh. going on, but I feel pretty strongly as a resident of Manhattan. Like, airplanes are not coming to shoot down at us, and mm -hmm. we have to have police helicopters at that level of five of them up there all the time. Yeah, but if there's an incident downtown or uptown, I understand helicopters yep. and they yep. understand so all they, that. But it's the tourists. Yeah. And one more very important thing. Yes. Is Kathy Hochul going to be our governor again? This is scary. So I will say, in my partisan hat, if Democrats don't get out there and vote for her, then no, she won't. So <laughs> everybody has to not take anything for granted. Right. We've got a guy named Trump in the White House, but my party hung out at home and thought Trump was ridiculous. Of course he can't win. Right. Exactly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That right. wasn't very funny, was it? No. That, we, that he ended up as president. Right. I am partisan when it comes to this. And so, yes, people have to go out and vote. Do I trust polls? I gave up trusting polls years ago. Uh, first of all, people don't answer the phone anymore. So it takes polling companies like five times as long to even find people who are willing to answer their calls. And so it's just not a reliable science. And it was never much of a science anyway. So I don't know what's true or not, but the polls seem to show that Mr. Zelda is moving ahead. Mm -hmm. Not ahead, but moving up. Yeah. And that I think, as a good, strong Democrat, I think I'm very worried about that because I really, really don't think he should be the governor of New York State. Mm -hmm. So, oops, I'm sorry, but I have people I didn't talk to yet. Somebody over here had their yes. hand up. Yes, hi. 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 Um, Thank you so much. Thank you, Margie, for inviting me. I would like to introduce myself because I don't know if all of you know me. And I don't. I see some new faces as well. Um, my name is Sandra Gavalite, and I represent Roosevelt Island Visual Art Association, Riva Gallery. Um, I started five months ago, and here is Jim and Jan, vice presidents of the gallery. And we have some concerns that we would like to address and ask uh, what ways we could um, have some improvements. Uh, first, what we really want to do is to improve the space. Um, and right now, the gallery doesn't have heating or air conditioning systems. And I know that this is something not that doesn't really have anything to do. We cannot ask you for that, and we're not asking for that, but maybe you could help and recommend some ways of how we could go about it, because we are a nonprofit organization. Um, 
we have been paying rent in the past few years and being at our gallery it makes it really difficult for us to have to generate funds um, so if there are some ways that we could generate funds easier uh, with some programs maybe we would like to offer more uh, art programs to residents on the island to children uh, young adults seniors we've been working with senior center in a few months um, so we, we gave our artists as teachers. So we're kind of trying to collaborate with different organizations here on the island, uh, trying to work with Cornell Tech, with um, Color Hospital, and we're holding their exhibition. So we're trying to really expand and bring art. Uh, th this organization has been doing a great job for the past 20 years. Um, but at the moment right now, we want to expand it even more and give more chances to young artists to, to showcase their work. We want to um, uh, to have some way of allowing artists to work and have more studio spaces, so have artists in residency. Uh, that's sort of like a very long-term plan. And we want this organization to be able to have employed staff and so on. So we really want to make it a full serving art gallery, serving the community of Roosevelt Island. Uh, this island has a lot of sculptures, it, 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 it hosts a lot of festivals, so we want to have that culture and, and our gallery really wants to be part of that and, and bring the culture to this island. So what we're asking is, we're constantly asking people and residents to support the gallery, then maybe you could give us some advice or channel us the right direction of how we could be a cultural center and how our gallery could could support but we could we also need to to maintain we, we need to maintain the space we need to maintain um salaries and things like that so that we could serve so we are in a tricky situation right now so maybe you could give us some some advice and guide so, us or direct us the, the right way so i don't know that i have anything to suggest right away although i have a question you have a landlord that rents you space in the oh, right. yes. 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 corporation. The people that own Southtown buildings, Hudson yeah. Related. Yeah. But they sublease it from REAC. I know, but what, are they yeah. obligated to provide keys? Not in a commercial space. Not, Not in a commercial, commercial space. space. No. Wow. Okay. Yeah. See, I didn't even know that. And we're having trouble. The state's arts, and I forget the exact term, is having. Governor Hochul gave a huge amount of money for capital improvements in for nonprofits. Yes. And we're right again stuck in that little nook and cranny where the, it'll go to any, everybody as long as the lease itself is not held by a state agency, which ours is. They can't give money to the state. They can't give money to another state agency. And REAC def owns the storefronts. Leases them to Hudson Related, they sublease it to us. So we're right So you as a group could receive funds, but not but not for a building, not for a building that's leased from the state, from a state agency. So not for right, and not they for have the building issues, but not for the building issues. But you could receive funding for the art school, right? Right. Okay. But what we can expand our programs once we get heat and air conditioning. Yeah, right. Then it gives us almost another six months where we can run programs. But right now, we're pretty much stuck in the winter. And nobody's going to come in because it's freezing in there. And in the summer, it's so hot, people come in and walk right out again. So, and, and my question would be, why would a nonprofit be charged rent? Oh, not for rent. They charge rent everywhere. But I mean, I've never seen well, a nonprofit well, I, I actually <laughs> worked for uh, the nursery school here on the island, and yeah. for uh, 40 years, we were not charged rent. Really? Yeah, as a nonprofit. The gallery so, wasn't for about 10 years either. So they changed well, the policy to charge rent. We, right? yeah, well, we, we've really, we've really got to sit down and talk about Roosevelt Island. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, How we don't own the land, but we pay real estate taxes for land we don't own. And then we pay ground rent yeah. to rent the land that we just paid taxes on that at the end of the double taxation we still don't own. And then they charge us to use the space that's on the land that we pay all the taxes for. So in the beginning, at least, they were giving us something. They were saying, OK, take some of this space for free. You didn't have to rent the church when you wanted to have a, a residence meeting. Right. Now all that so kind of stuff. Clearly, I need like a graduate level. Yeah. How <laughs> yeah. yeah. world the islands, world world yeah, world status is yeah. different yeah. than yeah. everyone else's. But going to your other point, yeah. so I would want to mention that the state arts council did get it had fifty million specifically for cap 
capital, it got 150, I got an extra 100, but I don't think that necessarily will work for you no, for the capital. That's the one we applied to because of the capital one. The city actually puts a lot more money into the arts than the state does. New York City has a very large, um, I forgot what the agency's called. Department of Cultural Affairs. Thank you so much, Department of Cultural Affairs. Um, and they have far more money that they put into the arts than New York State which disturbs me since we're all state and they're just the city, but they put a lot more money. So I would definitely be going on talking to them about what, if any, they have programs that you might actually fit in the box of for money to just do what you need to do that maybe you can't do in the normal way because if you're in REAC land. <laughs> there is a place called the Foundation Center mm -hmm. on Lower Fifth Avenue and they're an amazing place if anybody else is working in the not-for-profit sector. They're like a library with mm -hmm. librarians who specialize in different areas of not-for-profit work. And you go in and you make an appointment and you say, I'm a small arts organization looking for foundation grants that will help me with ABC. And you talk to the librarian who specializes in little arts organizations as opposed to medium ones or big ones. And they will actually show you foundation materials and say, these are the ones you ought to aim for. Mm -hmm. And they're like, my, I, I ran not for profits for 20 years before I was a state senator. And they were like my favorite place in the city of New York. Because you just go in and go. I actually so worked with them and we ran into some roadblocks again because of the city state kind of thing. Okay. But, but, well, again, that, that I'm might say on the capital them, side, but, but not yeah. on the programming side. Not on the programming side, side. yeah. Right. Um, right. Um, so I would definitely go there to even just figure out mm -hmm. who are the foundations who like to fund small mm -hmm. arts yeah. organizations, because there are some. Mm -hmm. I was once trying to get money for a school meal improvement program where we would teach children about healthy eating, and the foundation center actually helped me find a foundation, it's a true story, that had money that had to go for cottage cheese and school children. <laughs> and they said, the guy set this up in 1897. He was the cottage cheese king at the time of New York City. He left his money because he thought all school children should eat cottage cheese. We've never had anyone who wanted to do cottage cheese in school children since. We can't get rid of this money. I, would you teach about cottage cheese? I go, it's healthy enough. Sure, that could be part of the curriculum. We're going to teach about a lot of other things too, like healthy vegetables and good things like that and how things get grown on farms but yeah I could talk about cottage cheese <laughs> and I got like the entire uh, love sum of money they had sitting there for a hundred years ago no one else is ever going to shut up on, show up and one cottage cheese money we've been trying for over a hundred years now take it all I was like okay fine thank you so much so I'm a huge fan of like cottage go cheese. and well, I don't know if you cottage cheese I took all their cottage cheese money we, <laughs> we, we, we could make an installation of cottage cheese <laughs> now that was like 25 years ago that money came and went um, okay you had another question yeah, two yeah. things one thing is we used to get a bunch of island organizations used to get discretionary money from the city council mm -hmm. no one is getting it except the historical society now Julie Bennett has money for programming no one bothers applying anymore. It's we crazy. got it, Judy. Okay, we so you're it. two. Yeah. You and I, and I don't, I don't know if anyone else. So everybody it. should be applying to Julie Many, because right. it's true. Yes. City Council has more discretionary right. money than the Assembly right. or the Senate. And, this, and the Assembly has right. some, and the Senate yeah. has some. So when I'm your senator in January, and we come through another budget year, you can definitely make applicant requests for me. Um, sometimes we get money, sometimes we don't. Andrew Cuomo didn't like to give us any money, so we had years where we didn't have any. But I think that Kathy Hochul is a little freer than that, so then we do have some money again. Um, so watch out for probably, look, you can approach me at any time you want and we'll add you to a folder if people have asked. Um, but we won't know whether we really have money again probably till late March next year. And my only other thing is early voting, 9 a.m. to yes. 5 p.m. next Saturday and Sunday. I can't remember the rest of the dates. It's gonna be somewhere in the school. I don't know where because I think the school rebelled against giving up their cafeteria for a week. Uh, I think it may be in the library. So, but early voting, so don't give me any excuses. I expect to see everyone there. <laughs>
Well, you can, absentee absentee vote. Vote. Mm -hmm. you can absentee vote. You can early vote, or you can actually vote on November eighth. Right. right. Yeah. Next mm -hmm. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yes, yes you are correct. Thank yes. you for pitching. That. Yes, please. That seems very boring. And we have the chairs very boring. There were only four hundred people <laughs> show up for nine days. You know? yeah, that is pretty sad. It's pathetic. Yes. It appears to me that the I've been here three years, so I definitely agree with you. But for some way, from uh, Manhattan to Roosevelt Island is uh, unscheduled to be closed. I know some of you have been trying to go home and end up in Queens, but it does not function many, many times. It does not stop at Roosevelt Island for many people. And this is a uh, crime. So this is the train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Their service has gotten worse in the last couple of years as the COVID crisis came, threw them off, and continues to throw them off. So I don't know whether there's, if they're actually going to change a schedule or skip stops for some extended period of time, that is supposed to be announced yeah. and posted. They do. They do. They do. Yeah. Yeah. So they just, they're often doing maintenance and it'll be going in one exactly. direction and not the, right. not the other. And they right. do post. And then they put that on their website. Now, I don't know if you're a computer whiz or not, but they actually do put those up on their website so you can check before you're starting a trip. Um, but if it's happening because they have a schedule repair, maintenance, whatever, there's probably nothing to be done about it other than to learn that before you get on the, the train at X location, believing you're gonna get to home in a reasonable yeah. period of time. Or if there's a stabbing or somebody <laughs> pushed on the track. But that you don't know in advance, that you get on the train and somebody announces there's police activity, there's ambulance yeah. activity, and you yeah. just have to sit there and wait. Exactly. And that has nothing to do with being on Roosevelt Island. Right. Mm -hmm. We're an equal opportunity mm -hmm. abuser for all New Yorkers when it comes to what could happen when you're on the MTA. Omni. Yes. Omni. 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 We didn't yes. have Omni at the tram. We have to still use Metro cars. Ah. Uh, it causes so chaos with the tourists. And what have you learned? Okay. Do they tell you why? It's a Roosevelt Island. They're supposed to be planning. It's supposed to be happening soon. They want also to call me on the train. So when do you write me a note to talk to the MTA about on the list? So we can check with MTA about when they think they're getting it going. It's not on all the buses yet either. It's, you know, it's on trains. But there are some bus lines that it's on and some I think it's going to happen just we have no idea. It's, it's it's a conference on the weekends when we get tons of tourists and the two metro card machines break down, right. and which they do every single weekend, and then the people come to the visitor center expecting us to be bankers, and to give them coins, ah. and then we send it to the subway station, and it's just it's it's terrible because it and also I don't know anything about senior citizens, uh, but I mean just for the general public, uh, not having nothing here is a real hassle. Well, my understanding is Omni, as long as you like register it, will get will do half fare for you as a senior. So you register your card with the Omni computer system, and then it will only charge you half fare. I believe that is happening. The tram the tram the tram tram doesn't need Metro card at all. No, it doesn't. Right, and that's what we were the last people to get Metro card. Oh, so yeah. they figure you might as well be the last good one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's bad. I'm sorry. I didn't say that. Don't put that on. <laughs> um, Could you? Yes. I know this is probably way out of your, your uh, valley voice, but. Could you tell me who I could call to ask for lights to be turned off in Manhattan, for example? Me <laughs> <laughs> personally? Or your office, you know, leave me somewhere because I don't know who to call. 
Um, I've tried oh, 311 and they like. Yeah, but what lights are we looking lights for? For example, the. Rockefeller University yeah. is now horizontal here, and yeah. their lights are on all the time. Right. 24 right. seconds. And, you know, and other various buildings, and especially, um, you know, you might think of the weird lights, but um, during, you know, bird vibrations, um, you know, this is this is an issue of the birds, you know, not being able to fly through, um, and so I'm wondering why in New York City we're not lowering lights and we're not, you know, doing things like that. Um, but especially for many of us on Roosevelt Island, just along this corridor, it's just it's it's horrendous. I have you know I have shades and I'm going to put up curtains, but. So if there are lights coming lights from residential buildings, I don't think we could do anything. No, these are not residential. Yeah. Not residential. Uh, uh, residential. Light on the drive. Big shining spotlights. On the FDR drive? Yes. They strike it lights up everything. So I doubt we're going to get them to turn off the lights on the FDR drive. No, no, no. It's not It's not but I don't know why they have lights aimed at you. Even if they have internal lights, they would just be on internally. So that we were talking about also, they're outside of the open and we're figuring out how not to drown all the water.